Hi, everyone. My name is Les Velez, and welcome to the OPUS interview series. OPUS, the Organization for Paranormal Understanding and Support, is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was founded in 1994 by myself and a doctor friend of mine, Dr. Eugene Lipson. Our mission, simply put, uh, is to help people having paranormal experiences. Um, I think if you want more information on us, uh, you can go to our website, which is opusnetwork.org, and you'll get a full rundown on what we do, what we offer. And uh, of course, this uh, interview series is on our website, and it also is on YouTube. Uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce uh, to you this morning or this afternoon or whenever you're seeing this, uh, Wes Roberts. Um, is a 30 plus year contact, con, excuse me, contract uh, college professor who teaches computer technology, business writing and communication and office procedures for two of the largest uh, colleges in Canada. In addition, he is a trained virtual assistant writer and author. In the late uh, 1980s, Wes had a remarkable experience, which in time over 20 years, in fact, was identified as an alien abduction. As an abductee, though he prefers to call himself an experiencer, his passion is to spread the word to help others come to terms with their own potential alien encounters. Also to tell others, we are not from here, which is a good question. Alongside numerous alien experiences, many of which have been consciously recalled, Wes spent several active years in a paranormal research institute. He has abilities that many would call psychic, though he prefers not to attach a label to them. He is trained in a remote viewing, uh, but he feels that he's not proficient in it. Well, I don't know about that, <laughs> Wes. Wes is also a lifelong magician. No, not the stage type magician. So we can talk about that. What does that mean? Uh, Wes also co-hosts, hosted and periodically appeared as a guest on the Leslie Mitchell Clark's blog talk radio show called Contact. Together, they currently conduct interviews for their YouTube-based Contact TV channel, which I've been on, actually. So, yes. Wes, thank you very much for being here today with me. I, 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 I'm really happy and, and looking forward to our conversation. So, Wes, you know, why don't you kind of start off by telling us how you got involved with, with all this and when you got involved with all of this? Uh, Shirley, thanks, Les, and thanks for having me on the show. And I'm looking forward to the kind of outreach this can cause with, uh, with other folks at Opus, of which I recently joined in. So I'm happy about that. Um, my interest actually didn't start this way, uh, didn't start with UFOs or aliens. My interest started with the uh, paranormal. And so I thought, wow, this is for me. I mean, I'm going back to when I was 15 years old. And I thought, I've got to investigate this. Uh, I was strangely, oddly drawn to it like a magnet. So I thought, OK, uh, started to get some books out of the library as early as high school. Um, started reading up on mediumship. Uh, met uh, one of my heroines back then, Eileen Sonnen, I believe, if I'm remembering her name. Uh, she actually came to speak uh, in Toronto once at the library, and I met her, and she actually sent me a letter, and I thought, wow, I'm really flying high. Uh, here's a famous uh, psychic medium who's gotten in touch with me. And so uh, when I was of age, meaning when I was 18, I got involved with a parapsychological research institute up here, long ago defunct. Um, but it was associated with our major university, University of Toronto, uh, had funding, had all sorts of professionals. <laughs> and then uh, after I pestered them for two years, they finally took me in uh, when I was 18. And uh, I spent nine years with them, um, going to meetings as often as several times a week. Uh, sometimes once every couple of months. Um, at one point, they formed a committee, a standing committee uh, about UFOs. So that was when my interest started to get peaked, I guess. And so we did experiments on everything and anything. And these experiments were analyzed. They were run through statisticians. Um, they were theorized. Uh, we did a lot of groundbreaking work back then. So fast forward to 
uh, some kind of an interest in UFOs and aliens uh, to, I guess it was, I don't know, late 80s, maybe early 90s. I got involved with uh, MUFON uh, for the first time and I sort of faded in and out. They wanted me to become a field investigator. And <clears throat> I thought this really isn't for me. You know, being a field investigator it really was not for me. So I'm in MUFON Canada now. I don't do much for them or with them. Uh, but it was around this time when I got introduced, I guess, to some real interesting people through MUFON that I had this key experience, uh, my 1980s experience. And it was uh, obtained through a dream. Uh, so for me, most of my experiences come through dreams. And the reason I feel what I've told people is that we're accessible, you know, just mm -hmm. straightforward. We're real accessible. Um, at some point, we're in deep theta states. Uh, so we're easy to reach. And so if we're easy to reach, we're easy to breach, uh, I'm going to say. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. What, you know, that when you say accessible that uh, in, in that kind of a state, did you, did you actually have a, um, a totally just dream state or was this more, was it physical in nature as well that, you know, conscious recollection as you, I think I read about that, as you say, you consciously recall some of these things more physical in nature as well. So the best we can tell, and by we, I mean, uh, Leslie Mitchell Clark, Mm -hmm. um, my friend, a hypnotherapist, who's also part of Opus. So her and I, as best we can tell, the more physical abductions I had were when I was younger, real, physical, tangible uh, abductions when I was a kid, maybe up until my teens. And then it seems a, a, a natural evolution took place. And I've heard this from other people. I thought it was just me. You tend to think of things in isolation. Mm -hmm. So I thought this is just me, but then they became more psychophysical. So I was taken out in terms of etheric uh, abductions or spirit abductions. Um, the one in the 1980s was a combination of two or three different things uh, over one night. And I remembered it all. Uh, mm -hmm. So when I awoke that morning and I had a strange uh, experience with time, how fluidic time seemed to be. And I was sitting up at this point awake. Um, I wrote it all down and then I left it aside for 20 years until I finally thought I've got to check this out. Hmm, interesting. So what, what, what did you actually see during those periods of time? What type of uh, non-human intelligences, if you will, uh, did you encounter? I, I encountered what I tend to call helpers. Uh, I think Leslie and I both use that term or that phrase. Helpers are, uh, are um, uh, medical assistants, something like that. Brown skinned beings, mostly. Um, I rarely get to see them head on. I understand I'm not the only one uh, that, that doesn't get to see them. <laughs> they don't want me to see them. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't get to see them a lot, but brown skinned uh, alien beings, um, shirtless of all crazy things. I know that sounds crazy. Uh, who always are around shunting me from place to place or making sure uh, in any given scenario, I, uh, I take certain steps or I do certain things. How, and and did, I feel they do that less because mm -hmm. I'm under observation. Mm -hmm. did, uh, when you say they're brown skinned and all, what, what was their height? Uh, what was their, did you get a, a look at what their head looked like or anything like that? More or less hybrid, more or less humanoid. Humanoid, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I would say about them is that they, um, they all seem to look very similar. They all seem to have what I would call pockmarked skin, as if someone had taken a sandblaster uh, oh. over their face and over their chest, as if they were, I, I, I've referred to it as being unfinished. Hmm. Maybe they feel very finished. I do right. not know. Right. Well, did when you after these uh, situations, did you come back with any kind of uh, uh, physical uh, markings or ailments or uh, implants or anything like that? No implants that I'm aware of. 
-hmm. And so I'm going to say no implants. I, I tend not to go down those roads. I'm not afraid of it, mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to make it up. So right. I don't think I have any implants, but I've woken up with various little things, nothing major. I've, uh, I've woken up with triangles on my body, okay. um, on my forehead and mm -hmm. on my chest. Uh, I had interlocking triangles one morning <laughs> I woke wow. up and I took a crappy picture of it, um, but I didn't make those and the bed sheets didn't make those. Um, so there were two interlocking triangles on my chest in red, as if they had been um, formed by heat. They were they were warm to the touch. Oh, wow. Did, and did and they, it didn't last. Yeah. And, and did it hurt at all? Did it hurt? No, it was just warm. Just warm. Um, it was as if somebody had put an impression on me. Um, I jokingly said, and I don't really mean this because I understand triangles are a thing. Uh, in this community, but I jokingly said I felt like I was branded. You're right. Uh, but I, yeah, but I, I can't say that's true. So I've had triangles up here and triangles here. I know uh, quite a few abductees that have had triangular pieces of their their skin uh, taken mm -hmm. out, uh, especially on their hands. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you what do you think this all means? I mean, why why would they put these triangular marks on you? Is there some meaning behind that other than a brand? I'd like to say it's because I've asked a thousand times for more proof, mm -hmm. uh, but that's probably not it because they never. How would I put this? They never accede to my questions. It's like come and sit on the couch if you don't mind once. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, and it doesn't happen. So I'm going to say that I've had probably procedures or processes done. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recall anything. Well, I take that back. I have one rather unpleasant. Ex now, I, I had a couple of unpleasant experiences where it seems to me they were doing something on my body and two or three times with my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but, but at least once or twice on my body. But you mentioned earlier, Les, that, you know, do I wake up with ailments or anything like that? Um, I've woken up two different ways. One is like I've been run over by a truck. Mm. And um, okay. I'm, I'm always able to say without putting my finger on it those mornings, it's not because I had a crappy night's sleep. Uh, I'm an insomniac already. Uh, so it's, it's more like I, I felt like I was really busy. You know, I had to be right. busy last night. Right, right. Yeah. Hmm. So, so do you get a sense of, of, of personalities with these entities at all? Uh, what, you know, are they always nice? Or are they always mean? Or are they neutral? Or, or what, what kind of a sense do you get uh, as far as their, their demeanor? Um, <clears throat> depending on which category they <clears throat> i'm sorry Les. maybe we can cut that part out i apologize sure, no no problem just getting over a cold um <laughs> i'm gonna say depending on what i'm gonna say species they belong to um mm -hmm. i discovered in my first or second hypnosis session i had not known this um, because i didn't go to hypnosis for this but i discovered that um uh th that i have what i call a twin in my books um, a tall either Pleiadian or a tall white, as they might be called, a Nordic maybe. Um, I don't know, uh, but she's been with me since childhood. And uh, I discovered this in my first or second hypnosis session when I also discovered that I've been taken and I've been uh, intervened with since as long as I can recall before I can recall. I didn't know that. I thought, oh, you know, 1980s experience, that's it, and everything forward. And that was not true at all. So uh, I discovered that there has been one being who is still with me, who I call my twin. She's normally, depending on her form, about eight feet, eight feet tall, hmm. very straight up and down, no figure, uh, which is one of the things we, we folks attribute to everything. We measure aliens against us, which I think is a silly thing. So she's straight up and down, um, not much of not much of a figure. Very long arms, uh, I would say, 
more or less regular shaped head, a little more oval than, than our heads might be. Um, almost 100% uh, generous and 100% the teacher. And so, you know, I generally now see her, I'll see her in my dreams from time to time where I'll be having a regular dream about maybe going out to a pub or a restaurant or going downtown. And there's one eight foot person around. And it's like, no, I think that's her. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's her. The others, I just, I, I'm gonna have to say neutral as if they're assistants. Mm -hmm. and, and the only other category is the one I suspect working with the military from time to time. Um, they're highly unpleasant um, directing forces in lab coats and things that uh, have put me through a couple of interesting procedures. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as far as the, the types are concerned, you know, people talk about the greys, they talk about the mm -hmm. mantid type, they talk about the reptilians, they talk about the Nordics, uh, the tall whites, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, have you basically been in contact with all of those types or just ma mainly this, the brown type and, and this tall this tall female uh, uh, type of uh, entity, which is interesting that you feel that she's a female, uh, that you get that sense uh, for whatever reason. It's interesting, I, I, I think. I do too. I, I've thought about it. You know, we tend to assign everything based on our human experiences. That's all we have to go on. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> I have a distinct feeling of femininity uh, when she's around. And I know that's part of my true nature as well, more pronounced in me sometimes than others. So it's generally her and her race and the other sort of helper beings, no reptilians I'm aware of, right? Uh, okay. no dragons, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but she's <laughs> interesting, a small story, if I may. Um, sure, so she's please. been with me all my life. And a, a couple of interesting things happened. I was getting real annoyed thinking uh, she doesn't really care. She doesn't understand human emotions, uh, doesn't understand I need to sleep and all, all sorts of other things I was being a crybaby about. So once under hypnosis, when we were sort of in live communication with her, as far as we could tell, um, <clears throat> I accused her of not understanding emotions. This is a bad idea, <laughs> bad idea for me, because she sent through me, washed through me, emotions such as I've never experienced before. Um, I thought I was going to pass out from the impact of them. Mm. Uh, they were just so, uh, how would I put this, deep and intense, not necessarily bad, but deep and intense. And I thought, got it, got the point, you made your point, thank you. Um, the other interesting thing, Les, was that I have a very good friend who lives in Australia near Brisbane. And um, I, she, she understands my experiences. I've talked to her about these many times. She's like a sister to me. Well, she was doing her dishes one day in the kitchen and felt a presence behind her. And it seemed to be this female alien, or her counterpart. Hmm. My friend saw this being with her physical eyes. Wow. And it touched her. It was right behind her. And so this was like an eight foot tall male being. Hmm. Wow, it, it's it's fascinating. I mean, the 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 um, difference, different type of experiences that uh, uh, people are having. But you know, when you get down to the nitty gritty details, they're all different. But the overall overarching uh, phenomena is 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 very consistent. Um, mm -hmm. You know. Um, have you ever had uh, uh, orbs uh, in your in your uh, in your experiences or uh, poltergeist type activity or, or things of that nature? My gosh, this could be the orb show. <laughs> I was just responding to somebody today actually about this very thing. So <clears throat> about three decades ago, uh, and this was a magical development for me. I feel I don't know if it's connected to aliens or not. I began to see orbs out of the corner of my eye. Uh, typically, almost never straight on, uh, always a peripheral thing. And, you know, I, I'm sure I've read some research somewhere that we can see, we actually can see out of different parts of our eye, 
not just the iris. But hmm. I started to see them out of the corners of my eye, and a friend of mine did too. And uh, multicolored and never lasting more than one or two seconds. One or two seconds would be maximum. And 90% uh, of the time, flat, uh, two dimensional, and very quickly moving in and out of my vision, you know, just like whoosh, millisecond sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I pay attention to them and I talked at length with some friends about them. I normally see blue or white orbs, um, periodically um, red, once black, uh, but mostly blue or white. Sometimes they're not shaped spherically. Uh, tons of photographs of orbs. And, and they're as complex as any orb you can imagine. You know, pick your favorite orb book and examine some of the great photographs in those. And I've seen these. And, and they, they especially uh, come out around places of joy and entertainment. Mm. So they love nature, they love flowers and gardens. Um, and they also love things like I used to go to an Oktoberfest festival up near here uh, year after year with my ex. And we took hundreds of photos of orbs. Uh, it, is, it is amazing because uh, we've uh, recently completed the uh, first phase of the Omega-4 study that I'm doing with a, a psychologist friend of mine who's also a board member, Russ Galpone. He was involved with the free study as well. Um, anyway, uh, we had gone out to um, uh, mental health practitioners uh, working with, uh, you know, people that have had experiences and came back with the uh, some interesting uh, facts. The number mm -hmm. one that most people uh, seem to be dealing with the grays. Okay, the small, you know, three, yeah. four foot uh, type of things. But the second thing that uh, most people also had in their lives was uh, orbs. Orbs seems to be a really uh, uh, very common uh, type of a situation, and even even to the extent that. Some people have been healed by these orbs that have entered their bodies, but then also the flip side of that, uh, people have uh, become uh, uh, or had uh, autoimmune type diseases created after an orb uh, entered their bodies. So there's there's all kinds of interesting facts that are floating around uh, with regard to the orbs. Then the third thing that pe people talk about all the time is interdimensionality um, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it seems to be very prevalent. Uh, and then the, the fourth thing was poltergeist activity. All these things are connected in some way, mm -hmm. shape, or form, I believe. What, what are your thoughts about all of that? I'm, I'm going to start with your last point. I just read a book that was sitting on the shelf for a long time. It's not, well, it's fairly recent, 20 years old. Uh, Colin Wilson's Poltergeist, mm. uh, a massive tome. Um, fascinating because orbs and poltergeist activity seem to go hand in hand in a lot of cases. Uh, that with uh, forest uh, fairies and nymphs and so on and so forth, um, they all seem to be prevalent. For, for me, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to assume there's intelligence in them or behind them, programming them. Uh, and I thought for my own life, they're possibly probes uh, being sent to say, let's have a look. Um, my other prevalent theory, and it's just a theory, is that these are the deceased mm -hmm. and these are how they appear to us. And the, the millisecond for them, uh, it could be a week, could be a year, the millisecond. It's only a millisecond to me. And, and based on that, I've tried some little experiments without success of freezing the moment in time and replaying it later at length. Hmm. So when they occur, I don't have a chance to, to replay them. You know, it's so right. brief, generally like that. Yeah. And so I'll look up to wherever in the room the orb is and I'll say, yes, <laughs> you know, do you want something? <laughs> right. Please tell me what you want. Uh, but then I thought, okay, if we're able to access anything in, in space time, and I'm not, I'm trying not to veer too far off our conversation, but oh, if we're right. able to access space time less, I should be able to replay that and examine it in detail. Sure, absolutely. I, I think one of the things you know um, it brought to mind was an experience that I had as far as orbs are concerned. Uh, I um, 
I don't know if you know the name Tom Dongo uh, from Sedona, Arizona. Uh, pretty pretty well known gentleman. Uh, I met him uh, uh, in a restaurant one day at one time, and uh, we had a nice conversation. And he says, "You know, you should really meet this gal who's who takes orb uh, pictures." I said, "Really?" And so we got it set up, and I went over to her place and. Uh, she started showing me these pictures that she had taken of these orbs. And um, the way she takes the pictures is that she gets a feeling. She gets a feeling that something is there. And she, mm -hmm. this, this happened a number of years ago, and, and she had her digital camera. And when she feels that, she just starts taking picture after picture. Okay. And um, so we were sitting on her back patio that uh, overlooks this canyon and uh, it was getting to be dusk and i was sitting there and uh, uh, she said okay i i got a feeling that there's something over your head and so she steadied herself uh, at the corner of the house and started taking pictures well she showed me the picture later and here's this i've never seen a red orb before but this red orb was over my head and it had like a little yellow cap on it and every time she took a picture the cap moved but she didn't wow. move the camera at all <clears throat> excuse me and um then she started taking pictures and just basically of the sky and there was these worms these uh, incredible, cre incredibly colored worms that showed up on on, on the pictures, um, which I've I've heard also is 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 something that uh, shows up quite frequently. But mm -hmm. the the most interesting pictures she showed me were in her her uh, her her office that she had blown up. And here's this one, and it was probably blown up about this size, mm -hmm. and you could see. You could see in the orb itself gray gray alien faces. You had one face real close to to the surface of it. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold too. Uh, there was another one in the background looking in a different way, and then another one maybe a little bit further back that was looking in a different direction. <coughs> it was just uh, incredible. And and so it's like a, a portal, yes, that opens up. You know, My gosh, Les, I uh, uh, what she does. I've done this technique. It's it's familiar to me, um, and it's worked. Uh, I felt that orbs have been around. Uh, I remember one day in the living room with my ex. I said, "I know they're around me right now." Took a photo, and there's one sitting on my shoulder. Uh, so I, I'm usually able to sense when they're around too. But I don't think I've ever seen faces in it except in a book mm -hmm. uh, but that makes sense from what we're saying here right yeah i i think you know that there's been a lot of talk about uh, portals opening up and a matter of fact i just saw an article the other day about nasa <coughs> supposedly confirming the fact that uh yes there there's there's definitely portals that have opened up and then you hear about these case, missing uh, uh, persons cases like uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, David Politi's, uh, you know, his 411 uh, 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 show that he does. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, people are walking and then they just are gone. They just disappear. They, 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 they've stumbled into a portal and, you know, and some of them come back. Others don't come back for whatever reason it's 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 uh there's so much to this uh, you know as you start to go down the rabbit hole as they say it gets weirder and weirder and uh, are we ever going to fully understand this i don't know if our newtonian physics uh, has the <laughs> capability of understanding it i guess a lifetime's not enough is what i keep telling myself it's like Oh, I want to look at this. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that. Now I'm going to run out of days at some point. And it's like, okay, <laughs> did my best. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Well, look, um, you know, I, I think that uh, the, the uh, how, how did you get it? I have to ask this question. How did you get involved with magic? What were you doing with that? I, um, I guess, you know, I, when I was looking at books on mediumship, and seances, uh, sure enough, I came to books on magic. 
you know, magic being like witches and warlocks kinds of things, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm going to say effective, uh, but, but harmless. You know, it's not a kind of magic that you need to aim at anybody. And anybody that aims magic at another person really is pretty insecure uh, in my books. But I started to read books about magic. And I thought, oh, I've, I've got to become a, a witch, a warlock. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that sounds fascinating. And so I got a book. What else did you do, right? Right. The internet wasn't available when I was a kid. Uh, so I got a book. And I thought, okay, this sounds possible. Um, so I self-initiated myself. And, uh, you know, at the end of that night, I was this thing. Um, I wasn't a very effective thing, but I was a thing. Uh, so over, the, over many, many years, I've come to understand magic as a natural phenomena for people. And I can reduce it to its essential ingredients quite easily. You know, did you ever wish for something? Mm -hmm. period and that's enough to start somebody on the trail of magic if you wished for something gee i wish i had that car i wish i had that job i wish i wasn't feeling sick you know i wish whatever it is that you wish that my pet would live 20 years so we all have wishes throughout our entire history what if you were to direct those what mm -hmm. if you were to put intent and focus behind them what if you were to put your will behind them? What if you were to think there's sometimes better to do this wish than other times? And, you know, what if you thought there's a balance in the universe? Um, if I wish for a million dollars, I don't want to go through a Twilight Zone episode, you know, where I get the million dollars, but a hundred things go happen. Wrong. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, in a good way. You want it in a good way, not in a bad way. Yeah. I don't think I could write enough conditions down for that. Yeah, that right. <laughs> so uh, it, what I basically, you know, uh, fell into and have developed in myself is this intent. Just put some willful, purposeful, focused intent behind what you wish for it. You know, and I don't, I don't have a little black book of people that piss me off. You know, oh, I wish they would, whatever. Yeah, right, uh, it's just, right. it, it would take such a huge amount of energy if you could do that, mm -hmm. uh, even if you could do that. So I'm, I'm interested in my self-development, my self-evolution. The things I really wish for are, I want to understand more. Did, did you did you ever wish uh, for your experiences to stop? Whew. You know, that is that's such a hard question to answer. Uh, the closest I got to that, I'm going to say I wish to stop being afraid mm -hmm. at one point. And I'm largely in that position now. Uh, I never wish for them to stop. Uh, interestingly enough. And, and once I felt I reconciled my experiences, um, I'm, I'm good with this. You know, bring them on. Uh, bring more on. I want to go deeper. I want to explore more. But there was a time before I went through hypnotherapy that, um, my gosh, uh, I already don't sleep well. And so uh, I was afraid to close my eyes. I don't mind telling people that. Mm -hmm. So if any of our viewers or listeners uh, think, oh, my God, that's me. I'm available to talk to you. Trust me. I, I had a period of time, more than years, when I was afraid to close my eyes because I'd be taken. Somebody would come in. Something would happen to me, something bad. Uh, so I don't know if that was genuine paranoia or if it was the real deal or a mix of the two. Um, but I really wanted that to end. And I was really hoping I could co-opt the experience at some point. And, and I think I'm more there now, not on a conscious level. I can't, I can't dial up my alien friends and say, mm -hmm. let's explore this together because they still have the upper hand as far as I'm concerned. So did you they did still you, have perspective right, that I yeah. lack? Did did you did you try some method to stop the uh, incursions in some way, shape, or form? We try to, that is to say, Leslie and I try to arrive at a point where 
I could have a little more control. Um, because uh, what we were finding, what I was finding is that they pop in when they felt like it. Mm -hmm. I would never know the night. I would never know the time. I would never know when I was going to be feeling creaked out uh, the next time. So I'm pretty much past that at this point. I don't have as much of that as happening, but I think I was sort of, um, how would I put this, upgraded over time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there are categories of abduction. Uh, some of them are just downright terrifying and dangerous. Right. And, and then, you know, I think I've gone through most of the bad stuff's behind me, not all, but most is behind me. And my experiences recently are largely positive. So I think my little bit of wish magic, if you want, was that uh, I could reconcile this and live a fairly normal life. Okay, so but you didn't you didn't actually uh, put into practice like uh, one of one of the things that people talk about uh, those people that uh, want to have these experiences stop is that they they uh, they bring up the name of Christ you know Holy Christ you know please uh, help me stop this kind of thing there's there's a book uh, by Ann Druffle. Uh, uh, that she wrote a number of years ago, how to defend yourself against alien abduction, and uh, where there was nine different methods uh, that people over the years had uh, submitted to her that had worked for them uh, in stopping uh, these types of things going on. Um, but it's interesting that you've, you know, you through your hypnosis session got to a place of. Uh, of, of of comfort, if you will, um, th that you were able to uh, take a little bit more control and and tell them, look, I'm I'm going to bed now. Don't don't bother me until tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning or something. You know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, uh, it it's it's interesting. It's interesting. And but the, that the that session uh, with uh, her Leslie is is was really helpful, and that that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. I would say, Les, just in response to that, and if my, my headphones are telling me they're going to cut out, so if they cut out, I'm going to switch to speaker, um, sure. just to let you know. Um, okay. I was committed to the hypnosis process without knowing how long it would go on, without knowing how many repetitions I would want or need. Mm -hmm. And so I'm probably one of the odd ones out in that we did we did five years worth Wow. And um, over 30 sessions. Mm. So I'm probably an unusual one in that respect. But once we got to, to ground zero and understood a lot more about it, we were then interested in um, uh, trying to communicate with these beings, uh, this race that my twin belongs to. Um, we went more down that road. Periodically, we'd stop and investigate something that I consciously recalled. And, and that never stops. I don't know how many other folks would agree with that or have been through that. It does not stop as far yeah. as I know. Uh, you know, you've talked about, did I ever, you know, call on Christ or a God or a goddess to stop mm -hmm. this? The answer is right. no. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But, but through, uh, through sustained hypnosis, I would call it, I got to understanding all sorts of uh, interesting stuff about me and about the beings and and almost instantly when i began hypnosis um the the uh the psi factor in the um the um the esp factor that i already had since a teen was enhanced i don't know if it's courtesy of a download or how it came to me but it was enhanced and i also found out that i could do a little a little healing and i'm not claiming to be a healer i want to be mm -hmm. absolutely clear mm -hmm. Yeah, well, th this is a this is a factor uh, that seems to be pretty common uh, as far as after as, as certain experiences, people come back and with healing abilities. Um, I had given a presentation at the uh, MUFON uh, symposium a couple of years ago in Vegas, and um, uh, uh, Robert uh, Salas and his wife were there. Robert Salas is the uh, the uh, the military, uh, the major, I believe he was at the time that was in charge of the Maelstrom Air Force Base, all the guided missiles. Mm -hmm. And uh, this object came in and, and shut everything down. And uh, anyway, he, he and his wife were in, in the session and, and uh, that I was presenting and uh, 
they came up to me afterwards and said, can we talk to you privately? And I said, of course. And so we went back to my, uh, I had a little table in the exhibitors area and uh, they sat down with me and, and started telling me about their experiences that they had together. And that his wife uh, came back afterwards with healing capabilities. Uh, so these are parts of this phenomena that are, are remarkable. Is this something that is innately uh, an innate ability that these people have that is enhanced or brought to brought to the fore uh, after these experiences? Or is this something that they do to you uh, in order to make that happen? Um, it, it's the old chicken and the egg thing. I mean, this is the same thing with, uh, you know, people that are uh, psychic like yourself now. Uh, this is something that you you probably had since childhood. And it maybe even your your relatives, your parents uh, might be in that same situation. I appreciate you saying all that, Les, and I'm going to speak to it. And, and again, if I start mm. talking, you're not hearing mm. me. It's that my headphones have, have crapped out and I'll switch to uh, speakers. Okay. Um, but I... Yeah, I did discover when I was a teenager, I had some psychic ability. And um, <clears throat> I used to try and do readings for people and do psychometry um, by holding on to an object and so on. And that has always worked well for me. Um, but then through all this, I, I just thought one day, I, I feel different, like a different slant. When I discovered uh, uh, there's a new slant, added mm -hmm. to my psychic uh, uh, ability and that was healing mm -hmm. and people have told me who experience it from me it's like reiki and i've never trained mm -hmm. you know i don't have these talents that i'm aware of but but it's worked and and I, I i've tried to explain it now for a dozen years or so but i think it's i'm able or through me uh uh information or communication is passed into their systems their autotomic systems, nervous systems, uh, and their body takes over. It knows what to do. So I'm, I'm simply a catalyst is what I would say. But, right. but it's worked almost religiously 100% of the time to some extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar. I, matter of fact, I had a, uh, uh, a back situation uh, that was bothering me and I, one of the uh, members of the support group is a healer. He's up in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we did we did a couple of sessions and uh, him being in Vancouver and me being here in Texas. And uh, it worked. It really did. It really worked. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a firm believer in it. And, uh, um, you know, these are the kind of things, you know, when when you when you you hear this, it, it's like you scratch your head and say, how is that possible? Well, it, it's there's so many things, you know, that seem weird or just not not believable. You know, uh, what did Einstein say about quantum physics being weird science? You know, it's like, you know, how can you be in two places at the same time? And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's all of this uh, type of a thing. And I think that, you know, quantum physics may be part of some answer that uh, as we delve into it more and more may uh, help us understand what's really going on. But uh, psychic ability, healing ability, uh, uh, all these types of things. Uh, the, the latest thing I, I heard uh, the other day was uh, that these people that uh, do have uh, uh, psychic abilities there's more connections in, in their brain in the caudate putamen area oh. and uh, that uh, this evidently runs in families and people with that going on seem to connect with people that have that same uh phys physicality uh so they're somehow they're drawn to one another uh, it, it's, it just gets to be more and more fascinating. I, I totally agree with you, Les. They're drawn to one another uh, if they don't run in the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've certainly found that with me. Uh, mm -hmm. When, I, you know, people occasionally say, 
oh, it feels like you're looking right through me. And it's like, well, I'm not doing that on purpose, you know? It's right. Just, it's right. just, it just comes out. And, you know, one, one person, a former student of mine, uh, a growing up student, we're talking college students here, um, stopped me in the hallway one day and said, are you psychic? Just like that. <laughs> and I said, yes. And then it's like, okay, we're not friends anymore. And that was basically how that went. It's like, why? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Didn't, didn't want you probing his mind or her mind, I guess. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> well, that's, that's, that's also another thing, you know, that, uh, um, uh, is that, is that factor, uh, something that, uh, was created, uh, by our non-human intelligences, you know, eons ago. And, uh, that's why they keep tracking us, you know, after all these eons, you know, they, they keep following, uh, families. It, it, it's so common that, uh, you know, you, you have an experiencer and then you start asking them questions. Well, did your mother or father have uh, an experience? And the next thing you know, is the answer is yes. And then you find out that their grandparents also had some kind of an experience. And so it seems to be, you know, they're being followed uh, after all these years. And uh, Gary Nolan from Stanford University uh, talks about the fact that timelines as far as how old the earth is and how how often our our, our genome changes doesn't correlate it it, it it all of a sudden it looks like there was some accelerated process happening and they don't understand sure. how that's possible because then the earth would have to be you know an, another four or five billion years older than what we claim it to be like 4.5 billion years old or something um it's 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 just it is just absolutely fascinating. I, 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 you know, one of the things I, I want to ask you is, 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 uh, where, where, where do you feel this is all going? Where, where, what's, is there an end point to this? Is there some kind of a, a, a thing that we're trying to, uh, you know, the end goal? Let's put it that way. What do you have a feeling for end goals? I, um, I like the way you phrase that. I'm into the long game. Um, and I think they are too, at least that's what they've shown over tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. They're into the long game. But my belief is uh, <clears throat> it's at least an initial acknowledgement from an average person uh, that we're not alone. At least an acknowledgement that we have company and that the company's always been with us and that the onus or pressures on us to recognize the company, not the other way around. And then once we do, I think we'll find out we have unlimited potentials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I have that feeling that as well. I, I think that uh, it's limitless as far as, uh, as we start to really delve into this, you know, the federal government now has acknowledged the fact that UAPs exist or UFOs exist, and uh, and that uh, they're they're really concerned about what 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 that implications are of that. But the other side of this coin is the fact that we have hundreds of thousands of people, millions, excuse me, millions of people that are experiencing this phenomena. Um, you know, the Roper organization back in 1992 mm. uh, came out with this report that said, you know. There's like six million people in the United States that have had an experience. Well, multi, you know, multiply that by going move, moving forward in time, and that this is a worldwide phenomena. It's hundreds of millions of people are having experiences. And my latest theory on all this is that we've all had an experience, whether we consciously recollect it or not. Um, and I've, I've had a situation when I was facilitating a support group in San Jose, California, that a person said during a, near the end of the meeting, I've seen you before. I said, really, we're at a UFO conference? No, I saw you on board the craft. I said, really? And I kind of blew it off. <laughs> I, I didn't, it didn't sit with me, uh, you know, I sure. just kind of disregarded it. And... Um, and then it was like a year, year and a half later that somebody else came up to me and said, I've seen you before. And I said, where are you? No, no, no. You were sitting on this bench naked on board the craft and you were freaking out. And they told me to go over to you and calm you down. 
Well, I tell you, at that point, I uh, <clears throat> decided to go get regressed. Had three separate regressions, found nothing along those lines. So they must have done a very good job of burying whatever the hell happened yeah. to me. Uh, but I had multiple past lives. And that was the next question I wanted to ask you. Hmm. Did you ever run into past lives during these uh, sessions that you you had? So the the types of hypnotic regression used do tend to take you back in time. And uh, the one, the only one that stands out, I had past life regressions not connected to this mm -hmm. uh, just because I was interested. But the one that stands out that I sought to have was this interlife experience, this interlife regression, life between lives. Mm. And um, <clears throat> you're regressed to beyond zero, beyond the point you were born. Mm -hmm. You uh, find yourself in another life. You die in that life. And then you're going you're gonna to see what happens between lives. This is something oh, Leslie wow. learned from Dr. Georgina Cannon. And there's another luminary that actually taught her. The name escapes me right now. He pioneered this. Mm. Uh, yeah, mm. so it's life between lives or interlife regressions. And generally speaking, Les, when, when I had that, it was like, okay, I remembered the life just before this one. I remembered dying. Uh, I wasn't uh, Cleopatra. I wasn't a famous general. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a demigod. I was a nobody. Um, so I passed through that life. And then I found myself in a chamber meeting with, uh, with some kind of a council mm -hmm. uh, who wanted to make sure that I was on my way, on my merry way uh, to my next life. And sitting among the council members were aliens. Mm. And one of the things that came out in the regression it's kind of like this, kind of like a tip of the hat. Are you going to remember? Would I remember at some point uh, my agreement with them? Oh, okay. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm good. You know, da, 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 da. So I was reborn and didn't remember anything. Um, and until a certain point, when I did this inner life regression. And I thought, that's it. I'm finally getting to tackle the question of why I'm here. And why am I an abductee? Why am I an experiencer? And it's to make sure in this lifetime, I recalled that mm -hmm. and I did something with it. Like to what end, right, Les? What do we do right. with this stuff now that right. we know? Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. So why, why are you here? Why, what, are you do, what are you supposed to do? What's your mission? <laughs> um, it's it's not world peace or anything so lofty that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. It's more to say we're working, whether we know it or not, in concert with other beings. Some of these we would call alien, being extraterrestrial. Some are ultra terrestrial. Some are interdimensional. Mm -hmm. But we're working in concert with an array of other beings. And if we only stop to realize what they could give us. The places they've been, the knowledge they have, for instance, healing, what could they give us that we could then take within us, integrate within us, and then say, I'm going to move in this direction or that direction. I could have never thought of those things before right. without this intervention. You know, it's interesting. People always ask me, too, how, how did I get involved with all this and why am I doing what I'm doing? And, and, and I say, well, that's a good, very good question. It's just like it's synchronicity after synchronicity where you, <clears throat> you start to go down this road and then this thing happens and then that thing happens. Yes. And then the next thing you know, you're doing thus and such. And, and uh, uh, I, I've been a num number of times I've decided, you know, like, okay, I've done enough. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling out. I'm going to turn this over to somebody else. And then I'll get pulled right back in. Th th this is my mission. Th what I'm doing right. right now is my mission is to help these people that are having these experiences and, and giving them the kind of assistance that they're, they're, they're looking for. Uh, we're coming up on the end here. And I, I, I definitely want you to talk about, you know, talk about your books, the books that you have out there, anything else that you want to uh, uh, talk about. Uh, this is a good time to do it uh, as we wrap up. 
but I tell you, it's it's been fascinating. I uh, I uh, I'm sure I'm I'm going to have more questions, and we'll have to have you back and <laughs> and pick your brain some more. But uh, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Les. My brain is for the picking. That's part of why I'm here. Um, so uh, website, which has some tech problems that nobody will probably notice but me in the back area of it, is westgroberts.com. And on that website, you can find out about uh, the two books. The first was Intersections that was co-written by Leslie Mitchell Clark. So a hypnotherapist mm -hmm. uh, perspective on what I was going through. And the second one's called an experiencer's garden, because I think that's what we're in, all of us. Uh, we're in this amazing garden with twists and turns. And there's got to be a reason why we're in it. And then once we find out we're in it, um, it, you know, I think it behooves us to move on it, to take action on it. So folks can get a hold of me as simple as going to my website or heading uh, into email and just writing Wes at westgrobbers.com. And I think that's about it. I, uh, I'm i all for integration. So my current spiritual movements have everything to do with like understanding a unified spiritual theory, if you will, uh, how pervasive there are in terms of belief systems, but how they all might take you to a similar place. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you that, that this is a spiritual journey that we are all on and whether we recognize that or not, but uh, it, it certainly seems to be that way. Uh, are your books also available on Amazon or just through your website? No, they're available mainly on Amazon. Oh, okay, uh, good. Uh, Kindle or paper. Um, and if anybody's real, real keen, they can write me a note and I'll send them a signed copy. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think I'll send you a note. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, Wes, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I, I, I think uh, the information that uh, we came across today with your help is, has been uh, fantastic. So thank you very much. Thank you, Les. Much appreciated. Well, you bet. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You too.